Agitators, not educators. That's the focus of tonight's angle. What is today Falls Church, Virginia, was an early colonial settlement dating back to the late 1600s. Now, it was founded in 1734 and derived its name from the Falls Church, an Episcopal congregation. Now, it didn't become its own independent city until 1948 when parents there successfully obtained its separation from Fairfax County in an effort to establish a highly acclaimed school system. Huh. Well, 72 years later, Falls Church has abandoned its original mission. Just as hundreds of school systems across America are using the COVID excuse, the Falls Church School Board since last March has closed its schools for in-person learning, and it's turned its student body into Zoom bots, locked onto screens for hours a day of virtual learning, where kids are learning virtually nothing. Now, despite no evidence that schools are major spreaders of the coronavirus, despite the fact that even Dr. Fauci and the CDC have said that schools should be open, the leftist educrats in Falls Church have refused to bring students back full time, just like in the nearby liberal enclaves of Fairfax County and Montgomery County, Maryland. But don't think that during the shutdowns, Falls Church School Board hasn't been keeping itself very busy with other important work. On Tuesday night, it unanimously voted to rename two of its schools, Thomas Jefferson Elementary and George Mason High. Now, these founding fathers apparently offended radical activists. And the school board chair, total pushover, Greg Anderson, just rolled over. So after deep and careful consideration of everything I've heard and read, I conclude that renaming both schools is in the best interests of our students and a necessary part of our equity work. Equity work? <laughs> and yet they ignore the fact that poor and immigrant kids are losing more ground every day that they keep these schools shuttered. Equity, please. These people don't believe in equity. They believe in power. They're not educators, they're agitators. If our mandatory public schools make some of our own students feel less worthy because of the name over the door, that is a big problem. No child should ever have to be in a building where they feel marginalized. I believe we need to find names that are welcoming to all. Welcoming to all. Like countless other schools nationwide, Falls Church shelled out thousands of dollars to hire an educational consultant to navigate the naming controversy, if you can believe it. Funny enough, in that recent survey, only 26% wanted George Mason's uh, name to change, and only 23% wanted Thomas Jefferson's name to change on the school. So the petty tyrants on the board simply ignored this and sided with the purgers of history. Parent Jennifer Santiago saying, while there are many times majority rules works in the issues of equity, it is the opposite that is needed. If the majority rule worked for traditionally marginalized groups, we would not have systemic racism. Look, if these folks really cared about traditionally marginalized people, students, kids, they'd be spending their time working on opening these schools. After the last uh, vote last night, school board member Phil Rettinger brazenly admitted their real agenda. The critical moment for me was the presidential election. I was proud that in the Falls Church City, the Democratic candidate whose views favor equity and inclusion won with over 81% of the vote. However, outside of Falls Church, approaching half the country voted for the other candidate. That candidate put children in cages. He said there were good people among the white supremacists marching in Charlottesville. He stoked division at every turn. I am appalled both by his behavior and what the vote means for the country. Now, you don't think these school board elections are really important? This is where people have to start running for these seats and knock, knocking out these goofballs, just radical, rabid leftists. Now, I bet after seeing this, millions of Americans are appalled because they don't really know, they're not really thinking about how politicized education has become. It's clear that children uh, and their learning, their well-being, aren't concerns for these neo-Marxists that are running the education. It's all about remaking America. We need to fight inequality and racism with action. 
We need, as we are, to reform curriculum and work to educate students to understand the meaning of history, a diversity, equity, and inclusion policy for our schools that unites us and specifies further action. We should instead make a statement that we believe all people are created equal. Thomas Jefferson wrote almost those very words, and we can better live up to the goal he set by no longer having a school named for him. I mean, that that man could be within 100 yards of any school should terrify all of us. This aggressive campaign of wokeness and rewriting history is happening all across America. In Fargo, North Dakota, where students are in a hybrid learning model, the school board is spending its time virtue signaling about its horrible past. If Dakota is a chosen name, I think we would want to do work to make sure that we're not offending a community by assigning a mascot that's associated with the name as well. What are we really hoping is going to happen as a result of a new name for the current school named Woodrow Wilson? And, um, you know, is it to honor someone? Is it to um, build a story? I'd like to make a motion that the board select Dakota High School as the new name for Woodrow Wilson High School. Well, that motion, of course, passed yesterday. The day before that, a school district in St. Paul, Minnesota, decided that having a school named after the state's first governor was also far too triggering. I think this ripple effect of creating a culture of division where some people feel less than, where some people feel singled out, where some people feel like they're not um, real people. Waiting on this issue, prolonging this issue, keeping this name lingering around, knowing what we know is sort of a public endorsement. A public endorsement. And you can bet that the teachers unions think all of this nonsense is fantastic. Everyone's a victim in this game. These liberal school boards don't blink without consulting the NEA and AFT first. And that brings us to Joe Biden. You don't just have a partner in the White House. You'll have an NEA member in the White House. And if I'm not listening, I'm going to be sleeping alone in the Lincoln bedroom. What will you do to get kids back in school? It takes a lot of money to get them back. The estimates are 150 to $200 billion for the year it would take to get safely open our schools. Now, Republicans shouldn't give them a penny. We know that they're just going to use that cash to hire more consultants and more propagandists who teach our kids to hate America, its founders, and its founding documents. Kids are going to learn how rotten our country is, how racist our founders were, and how ignorant most Americans are. Now, these education bureaucrats should focus on the real problem. School closures are harming our children. This from the AP, American school district from coast to coast have reported the number of students failing classes has risen by as many as two or three times. Students learning from home skip assignments or school altogether. So here's a pop quiz for the educrats. What's more damaging to a child? The name on the school building or being kept out of it for months? And that's the angle.